Hello Internet, Taliesin here and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Reset, Taliesin and Evertel's Wondrous Wisdom Show and this is an 11.0 Next Expansion Leak Slash Reveal Slash Data Mine Special. Because BlizzCon is now just a month away which means we are officially into the time span when legitimate leaks for new X-Packs do and certainly will happen. Like when the 9FX underscore Drake Mount Emerald buff was data mined and everyone was like, hmm, that sure sounds like it might be a Dragon Isles thing. Or that time when Blizz sent all of the Bastion stuff from Shadowlands to the printers to make big banners for BlizzCon and someone at said printers was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to put all that shit online for everyone to see, you know? So here's the thing. This is a straight up warning for this episode right here, okay? This is what we've got. We have an image from Blizzard themselves used in their BlizzCon promotional material. We have data mined achievements which seem connected to the pre-order bonuses for 11.0 and which match up with that image. We have data mined cosmetics which also seem to go along with those other things to create a pretty concrete base of knowledge from which we can draw some fairly educated conclusions. We're also going to take a look at a leak that has swept the internet in the wake of these discoveries and yes it's fake but it absolutely shows what kind of phase of expansion speculation we are in. I know people feel different ways about this sort of stuff. I am generally not a huge fan of when storylines and cinematics or whatever are leaked and I'm definitely not a fan of the whole person who works at the printers just sharing the whole key art to the whole new expansion thing either. That just feels like an undermining of people's work for cheap clicks. But I do love it when we get clues like the ones we are going to show you today that we can piece together and mould speculation from. And so in my opinion, this is the very best sort of 11.0 leak slash reveal slash data mining it is possible to have. And this is all we are going to be doing this episode too. Oh, okay, fine. Let's do trading posts. There are chainmail tabards in this month's trading post. It's the best trading post ever. Right, 11.0. And yeah, I know it seems so early to be talking about next expansion already, doesn't it? But it is what it is. Is BlizzCon is here. Chris Metzen is out the back doing his stretches and vocal warm-ups and washing the palms of his hands in preparation to have 40,000 people eating from them when he gets up on stage and reveals this thing. We put out an official complete guess prediction months ago beyond the Western Storm's explory times and now we have our first round of real meat to be working off of. So first, the official BlizzCon 2023 medley of BlizzCon events handout that accompanied the final round of of tickets going on sale on September the 29th with all the usual good stuff. Community night, a new Overwatch hero that you'll have to buy, a free BlizzCon backpack. I love backpacks. The promise that you can play upcoming WoW content for classic and um 10.2? Huh. Look, I'm not saying that the 10.2 thing isn't real, okay? I'm not saying that it's a basic lie or a misdirect to hide what actually will be available to play. And I'm not saying that because actually the WoW gaming area is pretty small this year. I'm just saying that kind of sucks. <laughs> And that if it were a lie, like a misdirect, and actually there was something else available, which I'm not saying there will be because I don't think there will be, but that would just be a bit more exciting, wouldn't it? That's all I'm saying. The Dark Moon Fair and more. And next to that picture of more is this, what looks like a storm elemental mount for World of Warcraft. And you know, that's pretty exciting, isn't it? Because that is not in the game right now, and so it definitely seems like it might be a hint at WoW's future in some way. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, Tally, yeah, but let's be real, it could be digital goodies included in the digital BlizzCon ticket, which you don't even need to watch the BlizzCon feed this year, so those goodies are going to have to be good. And that mount is good. That fits. And you're right, that is definitely true. There is usually a WoW mount included in the digital BlizzCon ticket. That absolutely tracks. Or you might be thinking, well yeah Tally, it could be a cross promotion with Warcraft Rumble, the new mobile game which will definitely become playable during BlizzCon. The game whose logo is literally a bolt of lightning, which would seem to match up with a Storm Elemental mount. And it's also a fairly regular occurrence to make WoW mounts a reward for playing their new game. They did it with Hearthstone and Heroes and Diablo in the past. And you're right, you are right. That would also totally make sense. It could definitely be either one of those options, 
But... Then a Reddit post appeared detailing some new achievements that had just been data mined, many of which are absolutely to do with Warcraft Rumble, a toy box of collectible in-game minis, there is definitely going to be a cross-promotion with that game, involving fun stuff to collect in WoW, but there are other achievements which are not so obviously connected to Rumble, if at all, like Ysurgle the Dreamerk, Probably a Murloc Ysera pet, right? Lil Mags, which I guess is a mini Magtheridon pet? Fern could be a Furuk pet, I suppose, but I admit I'm clutching at straws on that one. And then there's Squally, a survey bot, what looks to be like three new dragon riding achievements, Storm Rider in bronze, silver, and gold, and the big one, Heroic Edition Algarian Storm Rider, which I don't think that's talking about the Heroic Edition of Warcraft Rumble, you know? That's referring to the Heroic Edition of 11.0, the next expansion, all ready to go on sale after the announcement of said new expansion at BlizzCon. And speaking of BlizzCon, that Storm Elemental mount they teased definitely looks like it could be called an Algarian Storm Rider, right? So here it is, a mount from the Heroic Edition of the new expansion which it would be reasonable to expect might fit the theme of the next expansion. So to summarize the stuff I think is important, we have this mount, we have storm riding dragon racing achievements, we have a survey bot and a pet called Squally. What does it mean? What does it mean? Well, first, obviously, there is a lot of storm stuff going on here, which, if it is to do with next expansion, is kind of wild when you consider that's how Dragonflight started too. With Razageth being the main antagonist of the leveling campaign, storm imagery was everywhere in 10.0, especially in Anaran Plains, where pretty much every NPC you meet would talk about the coming storm and then there being a climactic fight to stop Coraleth, the storm shaman, and her primalists from invading the Emerald Dream. There's been a lot of primal storm stuff in Dragonflight is what I'm saying, but there's lots more that we can draw from this data mining, mostly the word Algarian, because that's not a new word. It seems to refer to Kaz Algar, an as yet undiscovered area which we first learned about in one of the books to be found in Dragonflight's updated Ulderman dungeon. In Observational Report, Earthen. We are told about a group of Earthen separate from the Earthen who became dwarves with the Curse of the Flesh, who have shown much more resistance to the Curse of Flesh, but are weirdly still dwarf-like. The writer of this report shows surprise that even though these two groups are not connected, this second group has independently grown to manifest behaviours analogous to those which would one day be apparent in the self-styled dwarves, despite the two groups being separated by vast swathes of time and distance. They are described as having similar behaviour, language, and demeanour, and have themselves named the sector that they were sent to study Kaz Algar, which would probably make anyone hailing from that part of Azeroth an Algarian. An Algarian. I've realised I'm going to switch between Algarian and Algarian quite a lot in this video because f*** you, that's why. There's probably not much meaning to be derived from that name itself. Algar is an old Anglo-Saxon name. Godvida and Lothric had a son called Algar, who hilariously, in the only history I've read on the subject, is described as having a short and stormy life, which is obviously a coincidence, but an ironic and funny coincidence. There's actually a village still named after him in England too, Algakirk in Lincolnshire. None of this has any relevance, I just like Anglo-Saxon in history, sorry. The kind of corrupted by the curse of flesh earthen are at Kaz Algar because they are studying what is described as a frisher, i.e. a big crack in the ground. And watching Millennia, the writer, ponders if the distinctiveness of the Kazalgar earthen is due to exposure to that anomaly. All in all, it definitely looks like Kazalgar is going to be somewhere that we find ourselves next expansion, with these earthen who are like dwarfs, but a bit different, which has a big frisher in it, which warrants studying, and a lot of storm imagery to boot. Now, of course, we have already got lots that we can speculate on here, but before we do, we should probably take a look at some of the data Data mining that came out this week as well. Arsenal, Storm Riders, Storm Hammers, Wild Hammer Scouts headgear, and Regal Griffin Riders headgear are all account bound cosmetic appearances which we currently have no models or source for. They could well be trading post items, of course, but I think at this stage it is reasonable to be suspicious of anything dwarf or storm related, and so Wild Hammer and Griffin Rider stuff? 
Sus. Storm Rider stuff? Very sus. Almost certainly related to the Algarian Storm Rider mount, which suggests that the Earthen at Kazalgar are themselves Storm Riders, which is interesting. Hey, do you think these items could end up being rewards for those storm riding dragon racing achievements? Yes, yes, I think they could. If I had to take a guess, I would suggest that there will be an event to go along with the pre-order, which will be like the Kalimdor or Eastern Kingdom's Cup, but will have us dragon riding around the storm peaks, aided by the Wildhammer clan to get these rewards. And then when the storm rider gear crops up with the gold award, there's a little lore moment where the Wildhammers are like, oh, Weird. Well, I'm not going to do the accent. Weird. What are these? Let's go study them. And then a few months down the line, they'll be like, Hero, you'll never guess what. We deciphered these Storm Rider things you gave us, and we think there might be a bunch of earthen in this place called Kazalgar. <gasps> no. Which we now know how to get to. <gasps> Something like that. If that sounds stupid to you, well, don't forget, BFA also had an event connected to the Shadowlands pre-purchase. The Eternal Traveler Transmog, which unlocked an event where you collected anima for the Worm Mount a year before that expansion launched. So a storm riding event connected to 11.0 would not be a first. And what about this Frisher? What is it? I mean, presumably it's quite stormy and elemental, I suppose, but it could be an old god thing as well. A Riddicron and the old gods look like they are gonna be a thing next expansion. So who even knows at this point? And that's what I mean when I say this is like the perfect leak, just enough to get some serious and exciting speculation going. But essentially we basically still know nothing until some intern at the printer goes rogue and just shows us all of the promotional key art and cinematic stills a week before BlizzCon. And the fruits of these discoveries are already starting to ripen. This Stormbreak leak went viral last night and it does indeed look pretty realistic. Skillfully ticking every box in the WoW leak bingo. Fuzzy pixelated 1998 candid Nokia phone pick? Check. Playing into all of the features and things that people think is true about the next expansion? Check. Believably Blizz-like final product? Check! There was even this super high-res version of the same image which added extra intrigue and credence to the idea, except that if you didn't think this was fake already, then you definitely would now, because Mid-Journey is about as good at dwarf faces as it is fingers and toes, it would seem. But people were all over these images, convinced they were real. I guess it kind of shows how AI is going to change the game with all of this stuff. But people are already calling this the Dwarf Expansion Online, which I I like the sound of, frankly. I like dwarves. And obviously there is more stuff coming all the time. As always, we've linked loads of Wowhead articles in the description below, which will keep you up to date and allow you to peruse all this stuff in your own time. But to go back to that Eternal Traveler Shadowlands pre-purchase event, all of the stuff that we saw from that was related specifically to Oribos, the hub city of the expansion. And the watchers and citizens of Oribos that the transmog resembled the most were certainly a constant presence in that expansion, but only in the sense that they were based in the staging post from which we explored the Shadowlands. So what if it's the same with Kazalgar? What if that's our hub rather than an entire new continent? What if it happens to be to the west of Kalimdor, right next to the magical storms that stop anyone going any further. What if the Algarians' storm riding capabilities are how we cross those storms to the new lands in the west, which are the actual setting for the expansion? The lands that we know about from the 10.1 book, Tales of the Night School, which tells us about the Night Elf Privateer, Night School, and how he has already found a way through. <gasps> what if that a pet achievement we did? to mind, Squally has something to do with him, like maybe a parrot that sits on his shoulder, for example. Like I say, pure speculation, just like our original Western Storms prediction was pure speculation. But I mean, in my opinion, all of this stuff certainly doesn't disprove our 11.0 prediction, does it? In fact, I am reminded of Evertel's response to my prediction in our original video. I think the title is going to have the West in it somewhere. Okay. It's going to be like World of Warcraft, Westlands, or, you know, Battle for the wicked, West. Wicked, wicked West, or Wetland Wazoo. Warlords of the West. Like, it's going to be <laughs> none of those. I think it's just going to have the word West in it. World of Warcraft. Forbidden West. Maybe Forbidden West. <laughs>
<laughs> World of Warcraft or Forbidden like, West. You know, like uh, beyond the, beyond the storm the or great something beyond. like that. Yeah, yeah. Be- great beyond, beyond the storm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Thanks for joining us today. If you liked this video, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make all our work happen. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. And remember, my name is Tally Essen. Oh God, please don't let him be right. I mean, I like his ideas and everything and I'm really excited about the storms and everything. But if he nails this one, we'll never hear the end of it. From me, Evertel, until next time, cheerio.